so the other black girl follows primarily a young woman named Nella Rogers, who has been the only black woman working on her floor at Wagner, or I'm sorry, the only black woman working at Wagner Books, period, uh, for the last two years. And so Nella's been handling all the microaggressions, all of the, the little uh, quirks that her white coworkers uh, kind of throw at her, her indirectly or directly. And um, she's really excited when Hazel, another young black woman, starts working in a cubicle next to hers because she thinks, great, I have someone I can share the burden with. Um, I don't have to be compared to all of the black people in the world anymore. Uh, but of course, it's not that simple. And things in the office start to get very strange for Nella. And she starts to wonder if Hazel is friend or foe. Um, and then unfolding alongside Nella's story are the stories of three other black women who are all also tied to the world of media. Um, and all four of the women in the book are bound by a very chilling, sinister secret. For me, both Nella and Hazel came first. Um, I, uh, I mean, the I won't go too into the the genesis, but I had a moment to myself in the bathroom uh, when I was at work as an editorialist, or at this time I was an assistant editor, um, when another black woman came out of the stall, and a series of emotions went through me and. Most of those emotions were excitement because I thought, wow, like I won't be the only black woman on my floor anymore. Um, and so I was really channeling that feeling of this immediate like reaching out um, that I think anyone can relate to, especially when you're in certain settings. I think when you're in tech, if you're a woman in tech, uh, you're surrounded by men all the time, you would have a similar feeling toward another woman who comes in. Um, but then what happens when all of those expectations um, and assumptions you think women stick together or you, black women especially, uh, that's something that is a narrative that exists and is very much true, but then what happens when that narrative collides with this other narrative that like there can only be one of us. So so I really wanted to explore those two kind of truisms through the eyes of Nella um, and how that caused her to want to reach out to Hazel and then also how it complicates the relationship. And the more I wrote, the plot of course filled in among those things and I zoomed out more and more and I was like, okay, it's not just them, it is really the eyes that are watching them that causes them to have this uh, strained relationship too. And then thinking about publishing. So, so everything just filled in after I saw that these two women and imagined what their experience would be like being the only two black women in a very white uh, corporate workplace. I did. So the other part of that vision I had when I started writing, so it was the two black women in this workplace, but the other part of that sentence was, and one of them is really weird, like there's something off with her. And so a lot of the early writing process was me trying to parse out exactly, I, I knew how she would be weird throughout the story, I just wasn't sure exactly what would be causing that. And the more I wrote, um, and the more I really explored that like, feeling of being gaslit uh, by your own <laughs> your own people um, in a place where you are the most vulnerable to being gaslit like that. Um, what that's like and how terrifying that is. Um, and like you said, when that moment where she goes from friend to uh, ally to enemy, it's like so, so devastating. Like I, and I really wanted to get across that, but then also Nella's insecurities as well, um, how those play into her perception of it, it too, um, and really question how much of it is Nella, Nella's insecurities and how much of it is actually Hazel. And I think that, that there's a gray, a gray area there. And it was really fun to, to explore that kind of psychological, uh, psychologically thrilling aspect. It's funny because I've had conversations about changing the ending, the ending, um, and what I thought, you know, how I thought that would go, and it, what didn't feel like me because I, I really wanted. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's clear Nella is me, um, in some ways, I guess, and uh, I really just was trying to put myself in her shoes, and it was easy to do because I was thinking a lot about my own experiences uh, growing up black in America, uh, seeing all these news headlines. Um, all of those things that happen in the book, uh, there's the police shooting, those are real, like that, that happens all the time. And for years I've thought about that. Um, having worked in a lot of like coffee shops and things like that, having to see those things and then go to work and smile and be a happy person. Um, and so 
that was a thing that I've been grappling with. And I knew that if it ended in a too nice way, it wouldn't have the same kind of impact of like what you have to lose and why that's important. Uh, rather than if she had been able to come out unscathed, where I think that a lot of readers, and I especially didn't want white readers to kind of feel left off the hook. I wanted people to feel really, really uncomfortable and, and kind of ask like, what could we have done differently? What could, what could everyone at Wagner done differently? Is there anything that could have saved her? Like those are questions I think, um, I hope people are having with one another. I'd actually gotten some like not so great family news uh, right before it um, and everything's okay. But at the time I was like, oh my God, I don't want to be doing anything. Uh, and then I got a call from my agent and my publicist and they were like, oh my God, like, guess what? And I was like, what? And they're like, you got GMA, <laughs> the GMA book club thing. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I just like completely just smiled and it was just, the most wonderful thing. I mean, especially cause I was like here and then to hear this um, was really amazing. Cause I, I grew up watching, also I should say, I grew up watching Good Morning America. Like as a kid, me and my mom would watch Robin Roberts and of course everyone else too, Dan Sawyer, uh, Charlie Gibson. But like, I just have so many memories of like my mom doing my hair and like ironing clothes and stuff while watching uh, Good Morning America. And so, to then 20 years later, find out that I was going to be on it. I, I seriously lost it. And um, it was just really an amazing experience. <laughs>